Tim can join in later. Okay, sounds good. If we want to get the recording started, and somebody just wants to give me a heads up when the recording is on, we can go ahead and start. You're live. Okay, great. Thanks everyone for joining tonight uh, for our meeting. Unfortunately, um, our chair, uh, Tim Hertz Internet, uh, has been down all day today, so he's not able to join us. So I'd like to first just call our meeting to order. And if we could um, have a roll call. So I will go through if you could just indicate your presence at tonight's meeting. Um, Commissioner Griswold. Present. Commissioner Harlan, I don't believe is here. Commissioner Harrington. Present. Thank you. Commissioner Hubbard, did you join? Present. Thank you. Commissioner Ono. I'm here. Commissioner Vink. Here. Okay, great. Thank you. Commissioner Silva is present. And our city council liaison, Dan Carson. I'm here. Great. Thank you so much. Um, can we get, or can I make a motion, I guess? to approve tonight's agenda. So I will make a motion to approve tonight's agenda. Is there anybody who will second it? Seconded, this is Robert. Great, thank you. And why don't we go through and vote? Commissioner Griswold? Aye. Commissioner Harrington? Aye. Commissioner Hubbard? Aye. And Commissioner Ono seconded that motion, so we'll skip to Commissioner Vink. Aye. Great. Thank you. So the agenda is approved. Um, one quick announcement that I will make um, for those who maybe have not yet noticed, this meeting has closed captioning that is happening real time via um, a bot service that is listening and providing the co closed captioning at the bottom of the screen. If you can't see it, you may need to check your settings to opt in to be able to view the closed captioning. So we just ask that as we proceed through this meeting, uh, if you are speaking, please try to maybe lower the uh, rate of your speech so that the closed captioning can accurately capture everything that is being said at tonight's meeting. That's my one announcement that I have. Um, staff, uh, would you like to take a moment to provide um, the meeting with any announcements that you have? Yes, thank you, Darcy. Um, on behalf of Dale Somersell, our Parks and Community Services Director, um, she had, has asked me to relay some information to the commission on her behalf. Um, she is out on medical leave right now um, for several weeks. So she's uh, sends her apologies, but she is doing well after her surgery on Tuesday and is home recovering. So since your um, last meeting, the city council um, has taken the following actions. Um, at their October 6th meeting. They approved a resolution approving the purchase of a paratransit bus and, um, and the acceptance of the Federal Transit Administration grant funding for this coming fiscal year, 2021. Um, this new bus will pretty much uh, complete the fleet for Davis Community Transit with the um, Class C buses instead of requiring the special license um, for the other types of buses that we used to have. They also approved a resolution authorizing the city manager 
to execute um, first amendments to the co-sponsored field use agreement with Davis Little League. And this allows the Davis Little League to use city uh, baseball fields at the H Street facility for baseball related purposes for an additional five years. Um, approved a resolution amending the 2021 budget by increasing appropriations in the general fund for the Parks and Community Services Department for that. And approved resolution authorizing the city manager to execute a master agreement um, related to supplements for the Healthy Davis Together um, project and to approve a budget adjustment for funding provided to the city to implement the Healthy Davis Together um, programming. And let's see, uh, Parks and Community Services Department and Davis Community Transit submitted an informational report on the consent calendar at least um, 30 days prior asking for city council to hold a public hearing to use audio technology on the, our security cameras installed in the DCT paratransit vehicles. Um, that hearing is tentatively scheduled for November 10th. And then there was some continued discussions on the city advisory commissions. Um, and we are continuing to work on the proposal that was submitted to the city and continuing to work internally amongst staff liaisons for all the commissions. Also um, Central Park Splash Pad project. Um, we're currently seeking to secure funding from the Statewide Park Development and Community Revitalization Program Grant, which is part of Prop 68. For the splash pad, um, the project would only be possible in the event that the city receives this grant funding to support it. Um, if we do not secure the grant, then we would not be pursuing that project um, in a near future. Um, we're also seeking resident input about the proposed project with an online survey. The survey is open until October 26th. The city is conducting virtual webinars via Zoom uh, to learn more about the project and provide feedback about the elements and features that they would like to see included in the design. And each meeting is scheduled. We have one up coming up on Monday. October 26th at 5 p.m. Another one on Friday, October 30th at 10 a.m. And then the following Wednesday, November 4th at 6.15 p.m. And that uh, residents can still participate and provide input. Thank you. Was that it, Chris? Chris, did you know that you're on mute? Because we can't hear you. Oh. Okay. Sorry about that. Somehow it switched over for that. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. We can. Thank you. Okay. Um, Southfield Mini Park, the um, city's seeking input on amenities related to that park renovation. Um, the survey is open until October 21st. And the results of the survey, the final renderings, and the resident feedback um, will be presented probably at your November uh, commission meeting for that. And then we are going to be conducting other surveys and park improvement projects for Aspen Greenbelt, Senda Nueva Greenbelt, Sandy Motley Park, Sycamore Park, and possibly Westwood Park. And that is updates for right now. Sorry, they were lengthy to this <laughs> tonight. No problem. Thank you so much, Chris. And please send our best wishes to Dale for a speedy recovery. 
Thanks for that update. Um, okay, commission members or city council liaison, any announcements for tonight's meeting? I had something after your colleagues had, had a chance to speak. Great, thanks. So any commissioners? Hearing none, City Council Member Dan Carson, would you like to provide your announcement for tonight's meeting? Sure, I just want to elaborate on one of the uh, council actions in recent weeks. Um, the, um, uh, we're of course on a new cycle with the November election for council elections. It's uh, uh, creating uh, some adjustments we have to work through in terms of our process for uh, filling uh, commission vacancies and, and, and our, the regular rotation that goes on. Um, Given that uh, Gloria and I are the only two council members uh, assured of having a job uh, after this election, uh, the uh, uh, my our colleagues decided to appoint the two of us to assume the duties for uh, the sub council subcommittee that makes recommendations for commission appointments. Of course, all commission decisions are up to the council as a whole. At the end of the day, we only recommend. Um, and so uh, I think some emails are going out, but we would certainly encourage you to look at that list of uh, commission positions that are open. Uh, right now we're working on midterm vacancies and commissions whose uh, uh, terms expire December 31, which is, you know, as always, it's split with kind of half and half usually with these commissions. Uh, if you have an interest in an appointment to a different commission, please feel free to apply. If you know of other individuals that you think would be a good fit for the commission life, uh, and you see some things on that list that you would like to encourage people to, to apply for, please spread the word, please forward those emails. And we're looking to get as broad a, a group as possible of applicants um, uh, because there are, even if every single commissioner who is not termed out um, decided to uh, request renewal of their term, we would still have at least 20 vacant positions to fill by the end of this year. And then there is another wave of commission openings uh, for commissions that are on a little bit different cycle that occurs uh, July 1st of 2021. Uh, there are four seats on this commission that on the natural would be open for renewal. Um, so uh, spread the word. We're looking for, for people with um, especially a broader perspective, you, you know, um, new perspectives that would help balance out the skills and the attributes of the folks who are sitting on the commissions right now. Um, uh, we're going to actually start doing our first rounds of interviews for, for fo some folks whose names we already have next week, but this, will, this process will be continuing deep into December, and while there's a November 6 application date, um, consider that a soft deadline. We're, we're going to, I'm sure we're going to be continuing the process and accepting applications after November 6, which is what we usually do. So thank you. Great, thank you so much. So wait, sorry, just one thing to clarify, Dan. So there is a November 6th deadline for this round, but to um, summarize that it, it uh, can be described as a rolling deadline that there'll be I, an opportunity for other applicants after November 6th. Absolutely, I would consider that a soft deadline. That's our, we had to put a date down um, to get a press release going, but uh, uh, Gloria and I discussed this with staff the other day, and we we don't view that as a hard and fast deadline. And I think that's the tradition. Also, you know, we're working to fill these positions, everyone we can, and uh, we will just keep working till we do. 
Okay, great. Thank you. Any other announcements uh, from anybody that we missed? Okay, hearing none, why don't we jump to public comment? And uh, at this time, any member of the public can address the commission on matters either not listed on the agenda or those listed on the consent calendar. And I actually can't see if there are any members of the public who have logged in at this point, but um, if, if there are, uh, I would note that you, if you could please raise your hand with the raise your hand button available on Zoom. And uh, if you are on the phone and press star nine, that will indicate to our staff leading the meeting that you have a desire to make a comment. I'm going to rely on uh, Michael or maybe somebody who um, can see and let me know if there's anyone who has their hand raised or anyone who would like to make public comment, that would be super helpful. Um, for those who don't know, we will limit you to three minutes and we ask that you state your name for the record. So all that being said, let's open public comment. Nobody has their hand raised. Okay, we will Not then. Hold on, just a moment. Oh, okay. Sorry, just quick question because I came in and I'm not quite sure. Is this a time for commenting on the N Street mini park renovation or do I need to wait until you started that item? Great question. So the N Street playground is on the schedule for us to discuss and there will be an opportunity for public comment specific to uh, that in probably about 20 or 30 minutes. So if you would like to stay and wait and make public comments at that time, you can. If you have to go and this is your only chance to make that public comment, you can go ahead and make it right now. If you'd like, it's up to you. Thank you so much. I think I'll wait. I think there's a number of us who are queuing up and we'll all just jump in then. Thank okay, you. sounds good. No problem. Anybody else? have a question or uh, would like to make a comment during this open public comment time period. Okay, hearing none or seeing none, we will close public comment uh, on this section of the agenda and move to approving the minutes from the September 16th meeting. Um, would somebody, um, would a commission member like to either comment on the minutes from September 16th or potentially um, raise a motion to approve those minutes? I move that we approve the minutes. Thank you, Commissioner Griswold. So we have a motion to approve the minutes. Do we have a second? This is Commissioner Harrington and I second that. Second. Thank you, Commissioner Harrington. Okay, so let's do roll call. Um, Commissioner Griswold has made the motion, so we will move to Commissioner Hubbard. How do you vote? Yes. Thank you, Tyson. Okay, Commissioner Ono? Yes. Commissioner Vink? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Harrington seconded that. Commissioner Silva, I vote yes. So that means the minutes are approved. Thank you so much. Okay, let's move on to the next item on the agenda, which is the N Street Playground. So I will pause and hand it over to our uh, city staff to introduce this topic. Is that okay, Chris? I uh, yeah, thank you, Darcy. Um, just a quick uh, suggestion for the commission to consider. Um, Related to the N Street Mini Park, um, Commissioner Griswold will need to recuse herself on this particular project. So the commission may want to consider 
um, taking the Rose Creek Brentwood item ahead of this one. And that way, Commissioner Griswold doesn't have to leave the exit the meeting and then come back. Um, she can. Uh, actually, so this is Commissioner Griswold. We have people who are queued up to do public comment for N Street Park. So in the interest of not having them wait, I'm happy to leave the meeting and rejoin. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you, Commissioner Griswold. So let the meeting minutes reflect. Commissioner Griswold has now left the meeting um, as she is recusing herself from this topic. So, uh, Chris, I'll hand it back to you for introducing the uh, this topic. Okay. Um, actually, um, our community services supervisor, Ann Marquez, is going to be introducing this topic, um, and then uh, we'll be going through the presentation from there. Hi. <laughs> um, I got to start out with... Um, I don't think the Zoom format makes me any less nervous coming and speaking at these. Um, I've been in the city 20 years and I've probably done this a dozen plus times, if not more, and I'm still just as nervous. So there we go. But at least my image is not upside down in my little box. So welcome. My name is Ann Marquez. I'm a Parks and Community Services Supervisor. Um, I've had the honor of coming back the last couple of years and being involved in some of the park renovation projects that the city is has needed to undertake for various reasons because um, our lovely parks have aged um, and now time is keep uh, catching up with them. So it's uh, some preventative maintenance and preventative scheduling that we've had to update um, a lot of the parks. Um, part of that process is identifying what ones are older and are need of um, some TLC, um, what ones maybe have some community engagement in the neighborhood, um, such as N Street. The other one I'll talk about later will be the Brentwood Mini Park, um, which had, um, it's got the Hyatt House uh, connection to it. So bear with me here in this new format. Um, to give you a little background about N Street, um, being part of these projects, um, I have seen parks I didn't even know existed. Um, to be honest, I didn't even know we had an end street. So um, I obviously know the big ones, Central, Community, you know, all Arroyo, all the ones with, you know, programming, but this is not one we have city programming at. So um, I was like, let me find where it is. It's super cute. It's super cute. Um, all these parks, um, when I've seen them, just really I'm just in kind of awe of what the city invested in years ago when they put in all these neighborhood parks because many of them are well designed with uh, bike paths coming through. Um, you know, Brentwood Mini has got four different courts that kind of dump into it. So it's this little pocket park. It's, it's great. Um, really forward thinking back in the day. Um, but these things do age out. This park was built in 1960. It was last um, renovated. Oh, I don't have a note there on that. Maybe it hasn't been renovated again. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed that point. I think it has, and I just don't have it in front of me. Um, but it is, uh, it's over on N Street. It is not very wide or long. It backs up to the city's corporation yard that is uh, the public work side. It's at 1717 5th Street. So part of the wall is actually the back of a city building. And it's also known as Dinosaur Park because it has a, a lovely dinosaur theme mural on there. It has a dinosaur rocker toy as well. Um, it has a path that kind of comes out um, to the east that kind of comes into the community gardens area as well. Um, but it is really just kind of sandwiched in um, between these, these this at end of the street, um, but it needs some, it needs some TLC. Um, the playground that exists there now is kind of tucked um, to the most western side. And so if you're coming up on it, you actually may not see the play structure because of the neighbor's house that's right there. Um, it's just a little worn and it needs to be um, addressed. The beauty about this project is that a lot of the neighborhood has been heavily involved um, in helping promote and outreach and kind of advocate for this park. Emily has been part of that as well as many of the residents in that neighborhood. They actually had, uh, I believe it's called the Creative Action Team, and I apologize if I'm saying that wrong, that met on a regular basis in person, but they now meet via Zoom. Um, as recently, I think as two weeks ago, um, where they talked about the project and what were maybe the goals, what were the needs of the community and how that could be met in this park. Um, they actually had a 
a, a resident in there as well that I believe was working on his master's program. And I think he's here. His name is Tucker. I apologize if I'm just br brutalizing what you were studying. Uh, but he came up and was a part of this process because he lived in that neighborhood. And that was one of the parks that he could frequent and kind of helped guide them along and came up with a rendering, which is in the packet for you to see. Um, some of the things they were really interested in having were nature, natural settings, natural features, um, potentially a performance area, um, since there's a lot of uh, maybe musicians and artists in the neighborhood as well, and a kind of chance to be a gathering spot for um, young and old. Some of this funding is coming through um, Prop 68 per capita um, dollars as well, um, and also the city has the opportunity to apply for a grant through Game Time that would help uh, offset some of the costs and help leverage the money we have available for the project. Um, part of the outreach that we did for this project, um, in addition to the great work that community group already did, um, was to put out a survey. So we created a survey and pushed it out um, on our city's website. We reached out to people via Nextdoor. Um, we also send out postcards. I believe there's a total of 325 that went out to the, the I, want, I don't know the exact feet of how we did it, maybe 500 feet from the park. I'm not sure the exact number. 325, I believe the majority of those, 280 or so, were actually local addresses. So this could be owner occupants. So that's nice to know that majority of people were still in town and not uh, maybe a far away owner of a facility who's like, I really don't care what's happening with your park because I live somewhere else, but they're actually invested because they're still here in the community. We had a great response. Um, we had over 120 um, survey responses come in, which is pretty significant for that amount of um, postcards that went out. Um, that's a great amount. That's a stellar return and people's feedback. So that was great to see that information. We also had signage at the park that had a QR code for the survey, as well as a bit.ly link that linked them back to the city's website that had a little bit more background, had some images of the rendering, um, had some information about when we'd have some Zoom outreach meetings, which we had two as well. Um, those were about a week and a half, two weeks ago. Um, and then we just posted on Facebook as well, but the community was very engaged. Also, let me add, we translated the survey into Spanish, and that was actually taken by some of the group members to the neighborhood for some of our Spanish speaking residents in that area. Um, unfortunately, I don't know how many survey results they received um, back in Spanish. I hadn't gotten that information yet. So from all this work and these outreach, um, they've kind of come down to having some different priorities for the project. Uh, phase one, I mean, we, I, all the things we saw that we could do are great, but re the reality is, you know, there's only so much funding and the, lots of items cost money. Um, but they want to widen the par uh, park entry path, um, obviously remove the old play structure and um, the surfacing that's there will need to be replaced to wood fiber. Um, Put, um, upgrade the location of where it, um, the grading of where it is as well, because um, it is kind of um, sunken a little bit. Um, they like to install new sod or reseed heavily, um, add a dry st steam bed, um, stream bed, not steam, um, with a wobble bridge that goes over it. So it's both aesthetic and enjoyment. Um, landscape planting um, in the old play structure location as well. Um, install some new playground area. And so they went with um, emphasis went on high, high play value versus uh, a traditional structure. So, and you'll see in your packet as well, I'm sorry, I did not put together another PowerPoint. You will see um, one of the items was uh, a single bay swing post because swings are classic. It has two belt swings and that would be in the playground area. And then an, um, an Omni, Omni Tri Net. So this is this giant kind of contraption and now my arms look weird as I'm doing stuff um, that has nets all connected to it and you can kind of climb on it and the, the interesting thing about it is that there's many different routes and so it doesn't lose its interest really quick because you probably can't do the same thing once so you are going to be doing um, multiple different ways young and old and you know as you are um, have better eye hand coordination gross motor skills obviously can manipulate it and utilize it better um, and the other awesome uh, um, option was um, wobbling logs and that would go over near the dry stream uh, bed as well um, but because funding is limited we're not probably going to get um, the other ideas into the first phase and that would be called in uh, includes installing um, benches as well as picnic tables um, more lock uh, log and rock natural Oh, there you go. So here you go. You can see the wobble bridge. And so this thing on the bottom left, that is the image of the trinet. So it's this contraption spear um, and essentially it's ropes and you can get different ways. So you can see a shadow of a child in it right now. So it gives you kind of perspective 
um, of how big it is, uh, quite large in it, you know, 25 by 25 use area. So um, things to keep in mind when we put designs together is that it's not just the item itself. Um, it has to have a, a use zone as well to make sure it's safe. So when you have C swings, they take up a lot of real estate because you have to have X number of feet um, on each side. So if the if the posts are eight feet tall, then you need to have times it by two and you have 16 like depth so that if kids are swinging, somebody walks in, they're not gonna get clunked in the head by the kid on the swing. Um, so they just kind of take up a lot of real estate. Um, but the other things I like to do um, was the logs and natural landscape um, and drinking fountain as well. They would like to have a small stage area um, with the means to access electricity, um, obviously in a controlled manner. Um, there are some concerns in the neighborhood um, that we want to attract the residents that live there and not necessarily people um, utilizing as an app, an, a, a location to potentially camp out or up to unsavory things. Um, the great thing about this neighborhood is that there's a lot of interest. The survey actually asked a question if they'd be interested in participating in um, helping get some of these things on the next phase and participating in it. So that would actually help defer costs um, to take away from either having to hire somebody to do plantings or um, any rock installation and or take time away from the park staff as well. So um, they were engaged. So with some direction, we potentially could put some of this project over to um, the residents um, who will then invest further into an amenity that they're gonna use. Um, I know when I have done my hard work and built my fence and you know, there's a sense of accomplishment and pride and you know, things you've already done. Um, and I think especially in a neighborhood park like that, when you know there's gonna be people using it years after you're gone, that you had a part, you had a part in that becoming part of the history of that neighborhood. Um, that is the end of my kind of presentation on the park. Um, the next steps would be to complete our application through game time. They were generous enough to give us a little bit more extension time to submit it. Um, so we'll be finishing that up and sending it out and that potentially could help offset some of the costs of the project. And then um, hopefully we'll, we could be awarded that. And then we would essentially start figuring out um, a construction timeline um, if we need to fence off the park um, and you know what that might look like. Um, from what I've seen, it looks like weather might be in our favor next spring. Um, I think we're not forecasted to have a overly wet or overly cold season. So that'd be kind of nice. That might be a, a perk of 21, that it's not an inclement weather nightmare <laughs> as part of 2020 has been. Um, but that would be something that would be taking uh, part in the spring. So I, Chris, if you can guide us to what the next step in this presentation is after I've probably just boggled the poor cap caption, the closed captioning bot. Sorry. Um, we do have Kelly Oaks from Game Time on the call as well. And I'm not sure, Kelly, if you have anything to add and comment on. And did a fabulous job. Um, I, I don't have anything to add right now, but I am open to answering any questions that um, community members have. Okay, so Great. Darcy, from here, we would just go ahead and ask the commission for any questions that they may have um, and then open it up for public comment. Um, Perfect. Sounds good, thanks, Chris. Okay, so why don't we jump to commission members? Uh, any technical questions that you might have for Anne or for Kelly uh, about this project? I, I have one, Chair Silba. This is uh, Eric Vink. Go ahead. Um, Go ahead. I, yeah, I don't know if it's possible to put up the um, the rendering or the the schematic, the illustration that was in the meeting packet, but. I did go out to the site. I, I too was unaware that that was at the end of N Street. It's a really cool little feature. But for the life of me, I could not quite figure out how that rendering uh, related to what I was seeing when I went out there. Is, is the park going to get larger in any way by uh, further extending into the city corporation yard or um, it, it almost seemed impossible for all those all that goodness to fit into um, 
you know, that, that modest amount of space that I was viewing when I was there on site. And uh, I, I am kind of curious to get better oriented. The, the diagram did not indicate where uh, N Street was. I, I think I know where it is, but I'd love to get that clarified. Is it possible to pull that up on the screen and for someone to point out where N Street is as it, uh, you know, ends into that little park? Chris, yeah. can you, I think Chris can see about sharing her screen. If you're, when it pops up, um, the very like, so the park is long and there's a path that comes down and that would be the path they're talking about widening and that is N Street right there. So it dumps into it. So N Street kind of runs into, if you were to skip over the courtyard, runs over Fifth Street. So here's N Street into the park. I'm not sure if my diagram here with my hands helps you anymore. <laughs> Did you, do you, does anyone have Tucker's um, rendering? Let me. Chris, do you yeah, want me? Yeah, it was a it, it was a very attractive rendering. Uh, it just was missing any orient, orientating features. Thank you. So yeah, so that park right, this part at the bottom, it has like a looks like a little zigzag. That is the entry coming straight up into this park. So uh, someone's operating the uh, cursor there. So you're saying that. Um, that area between the two uh, columns, if you will, uh, running perpendicular to the page, that's in street? Yes, I wouldn't say that's necessarily to, s I wouldn't say that's the scale because I feel like the park is not, I could be wrong. The park is, I feel like the street might be a little bit wider than this area is indicating here, but I, I, this might be actual sidewalk that those two columns represent. Okay, well that helps. Thank you so much for clarifying, appreciate it. I think um, maybe Kelly, you can tell us, I think in my recollection, I think the Omni Trinet was going to go where that, that berm, that Grass Hill berm is on the left-hand side. Was that correct? Um, from my understanding, we were going to put it where the natural logs are. That's going to be the play area that we're going to use. So straight up where you see the brown kind of sticks laying correct. down, it'd be yeah. in that area. Yeah. And that would be the swing as well. And the performance area would be all to the far right area. Yes. I had a, a question on the diagram as well. Um, on the blue area, is that concrete? I'm sorry, say that again. Is the blue area concrete? or some kind of pavement? Yes, that is concrete. And what is the width of that? Ooh. Uh, that will be five feet wide um, and ADA accessible. Okay, so the only question I had is, uh, as I look at that, if I was a grandparent or someone uh, elderly watching their kids play or grandkids play, they might walk along this pavement area, but want some place to sit. And so I know that that's phase two, but one thought I had is in that grass area, someplace near the pavement area where an elderly person might transit, it would be nice to have possibly some benches so they could take a rest and sit and watch children play. And I didn't see anything near the pavement area that would easily permit that. So that's my only comment is that if this moves to phase two, I think this is a great design. I like the playground equipment. I think the rendering is, is terrific. But my only thought was if there was someone who couldn't make it over to the far uh, benches, or the community bench or the, or the staging area, it might be nice to have some place to sit in between. Good point. Anne, are you taking notes or would you like me yes. to? Yes, no, I got notes. Okay. <laughs> Kelly, 
Kelly, since you're on, could um, could you comment or speak to Commissioner Vink's um, concern with just feeling like there might not be enough space for all of the wonderfulness that's in this that is in this design? Yes, so we um, were pretty strategic in the options we gave the community and um, using Google Earth and um, my CAD, my architectural CAD program, we were able to fit, it would know what was gonna fit in that area that's designated by the logs that we're looking at. And um, we had to dwindle it down to just those two items because it is a pretty tight space but it will comfortably fit the swing and the trinet. Great, thanks so much. Sure. There's still ball. Okay. Um, Would I, this is um, Sherry, is it okay if I ask a couple of technical questions? Yes, go for it, Commissioner Harrington. Um, I'd like to just double check to make sure that we followed all the noticing protocols and requirements that um, city staff follow and we did that for this project as well as far as i know i'm now i'm a little bit nervous but yes as far as i know is there okay. something is there something in particular that you were wanting clarification about nope just the yes and um because there have been um residents in the past who have been concerned that they didn't know about projects that were happening and one of the things this commission has worked on, um, my really smart colleagues here, um, have um, they've been working on the noticing requirements and making sure that those requirements are effective and doing what they're supposed to do. I would I would say they're effective based on the the large response that they got to the survey um, in comparison to which we'll talk a little bit later the Brentwood Mini they had fifty responses. Yeah. So I, I, and I thought that was a good number for people actually taking the effort to come online and do something. Um, and this project had 120. So I, I do believe we met that. It was on Facebook. It was sent out to next door. If you registered through that for your neighborhood, it, um, you have received a postcard. And again, I don't have the footage in front of me. I want to say it's 500 feet from the park. And that went to owners and occupants. So that was over 325, I believe, postcards that went out. Um, I feel like I'm missing one thing that we did. And then we also had a, the, it, because we can't really do in-person um, outreaches like we used to. We used to meet at a park and say, come to the park. We can't do that anymore, but we had the park signage of the park that referred back to the website, the link to the survey. So I feel like we got a good sampling of who was there um, and on the survey, on the postcard and on links to the information on the city's website under the current improvement projects page. It did reference the Zoom links were provided there as well as it said that it would be coming back to this meeting as well if they want to provide additional comments. So we may have some people who may missed it the first time um, and have want to provide content now, which they can, or they did and they're just still following it all the way through. That sounds and great. I do know that um, Commissioner Griswold did go door to door in the neighborhood as well for anyone who just likes the old fashioned human contact. And she was holding meetings prior to COVID, I believe, on Sundays mm -hmm. um, with a group of local community members. So I'm hoping they all got the word. Yeah, that makes sense. It, it looks like almost half of our survey respondents actually heard about the survey from a neighbor, also not Emily. So it seems like that door to door that Emily did worked really well. Um, so that's good news. Um, and um, I'll, I'll say this more in my comments, but um, I'm really impressed by the amount of community involvement that went into this project, especially Tucker McFall's work on this to see, um, get excited about, I got really excited about this project last year in 2019 and to see it come to this point is um, even more exciting. So I'm, um, I'm just thrilled um, that this project is continuing um, with the momentum of the neighborhood. So this is, I'm excited to hear more and provide more comments in a little bit. Great, thank you, Commissioner Harrington. Other uh, technical questions or comments for the project team? Okay, hearing none, um, we will 
now open public comment on uh, specific to the N Street Playground renovation project. Um, I will review the public comment instructions. Um, either myself or the assigned staff, maybe if um, Michael, you could help me out with that or um, yeah, Michael, if you could help me out, that would be great. Um, so we will call you by name or by phone number uh, when it is your turn to comment. We ask that you please limit your comments to no more than three minutes and uh, please remember the closed captioning that is happening uh, during this meeting. If you could uh, just be mindful of that, that would be helpful. And please uh, state your name for the record. So that being said, if you could either um, click the little raise your hand button to indicate that you are interested in making a public comment or press star nine if you are only calling in and not on a Zoom application. That would be super helpful. Um, so I can actually see the hands. Um, so why don't we start with uh, Tucker. Tucker, uh, Ms. Hall, I see you have your hand raised. Um, if you would like to begin, that would be great. Can you guys hear me? Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear. Yes, awesome. we can hear. Awesome. Um, Again, my name is Tucker McFall. Um, I was an alum of UC Davis. I graduated uh, 2019. Uh, I'm right now studying at Cal for landscape architecture as well. I'm the lead designer for this project. Um, and I started with just the question, uh, how can community design be integrated into park planning, into park design process, into the park design process for cities? Um, so on the front half, thinking about time and thinking about maximizing uh, the interactions with the residents and the community members. Really quickly to go over the process, we hosted four workshops. The first one uh, was about brainstorming and trying to get ideas from residents about what they sort of envision, how they wanna shape their space. The second one uh, was focusing around the programming, the play structure being that main element. Uh, after the second workshop, I decoded those uh, plans and sketches from the residents and uh, created three different site plans for them to uh, talk about the differences and, and the, the negatives and positive, the constraints and opportunities, I guess, of either one. And lastly, what you guys are uh, reviewing today is the collaboration of the hybrid of those three plans. Again, print, presenting it back to the community members. Um, to get their final uh, opinions on the spaces. Um, after each of the uh, workshops, uh, I, Emily and I <laughs> teamed up and met with a few uh, different city representatives, including the police department, uh, a lot with Dale and the Park and Rec Commission, uh, or including uh, two presentations for the, the Park and Rec Commissions uh, throughout the process. Um, it did take about a year, um, but I think with out the absence of school, it could be done a lot quicker just because it was maximized into these uh, four workshops. Um, and I'm just happy to be uh, still a part of this and maintaining contact with the people that I've started these relationships with in this park design process. Uh, I'm also a part of that weekly uh, meeting with uh, a few of the other uh, creative action team members. And I'm just moved into a new place and I've got my uh, neighborhood hero plaque is already up on the wall. So really, really uh, heartwarming to see this come to where it is today. And I'll still be uh, here to help out always. Thank you. Um, to touch, I don't know how much time I should have set a timer, <laughs> um, but really That's good. Okay. I set a timer and I set it late. So you still have one more minute left. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I can always just keep talking. That's, that's the part of it. Uh, talking with the residents as I walk my dog around, getting a lot of ideas, but I'm really just happy to see how this is kind of shaped throughout the, the time that it's been uh, talked about. Um, but really good ideas always coming in at the last minute. I really like your idea, Robert, about the, the, bench, uh, the bench ideas. There's always talk about uh, leisure space. Um, and then also, Sherry, I really am glad to see your face again and uh, happy to be here. Wow, somebody else set a timer. That was good. <laughs> okay. Um, you can have another 10 seconds just to wrap up. Tucker. Oh, thank you guys. I mean, that was that's all the messages I think I had today. 
really happy to just be a part of this still. Great. Thank you so much, Tucker, and thank you for your work. Um, Aaron Stark also uh, had their hand raised. Aaron, would you like to speak? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, we okay. can. Great, yeah. Um, yeah, again, my name is Erin Starka and um, I live in the neighborhood with my husband and my two kids. So I have a four year old and a 19 month old. And uh, we're an active outdoor family that really enjoys uh, um, biking around our community and visiting nearby parks. Uh, we visit our parks at least once a day, if not more. Um, and I have been actively involved as Tucker in the community di driven design process. And um, just the thought of what our park can become for our community here for both young and old people is just really exciting to me. Um, and one of the, the topics that I wanted to focus on that's important to me as a parent is just um, the design process around um, safety for this park. And uh, uh, one of those topics is, uh, as Ann mentioned, the relocation of the play area to a more centralized location. Um, I, my hope for that is that it will just reduce some of the vandalism that we've seen on the current play structure, as well as any other mischievous activities that can happen um, in the current location where that, um, that the, the play structure is. It's a very isolated kind of corner of the park. Um, so I think the new design really addresses that, as well as the um, new concept of um, installing these open play structures. Uh, I think that'll also kind of uh, hit on those topics that I that I mentioned, um, as well as relocating the, the park area. Um, and then thirdly, uh, just the idea around incorporating some of the nature play. Um, I think it's a great idea to kind of scatter this nature play throughout the landscape to encourage kind of less structured and creative play for children. Um, and it also means that we're just using all parts of the park, not just one corner of the park as it is right now. Uh, and lastly, uh, the improvement for the um, proposal for the park entry and the path that goes into the park. Uh, right now, it's just really not conducive to riding a bike um, through that area. And as you can, uh, I don't know, I think Ann mentioned it, that this park actually continues on through a small um, walkway into the community gardens. And um, I mean, I love going through there with my kids. They love visiting the community gardens, as do I. Um, so that's just a common thoroughfare. And right now it's just really not conducive to um, taking your kids to ride a bike through there. Even walking with a stroller, it's just not a very comfortable path to walk on. So that that entry path is something that's also um, really important from a safety standpoint um, uh, for somebody with kids. Um, and then I, yeah, just that the, the, you know, design proposal from our community, I think really addresses um, some of the main concerns that, that my family has uh, with the current, I'll, I'll close up, that was my time, um, the current like past date of our park. Um, and I just, look forward to the potential of this new park being a really great gathering place for our community. Uh, so thank you. Great, thank you, Erin. Appreciate your comments. Okay, um, next public comment is Emily Griswold. Uh, good evening, commission members. So I'm actually speaking as a member of the public. My name is Emily Griswold. And um, I just wanted to give a little neighborhood perspective on this park. So as you've heard, we, uh, the neighborhood worked with Tucker McFall for about a year on developing a community design for Entry Park. And then following that, we partnered with city staff to seek grant funding to um, implement those improvements. And I'm really excited that uh, this project has been prioritized for current funding, um, some of the bigger grants we went to went for, it, unfortunately, we were not able uh, to successfully receive those. So ever since uh, the beginning of September, Dale reached out to me and told me that we would um, have the opportunity to start working on this renovation project. And so over the last six weeks, there's been a neighborhood park planning group that has been convening weekly on Sunday mornings and um, 
we've mobilized people to reach out to neighbors, gather feedback, and co-lead this renovation process with the city. And we're really interested in seeking to leverage city funds with neighborhood participation. I, I do have to little, do a little fact check. I did not knock on every neighbor's door. We have a team of people <laughs> and I'm more sending emails, honestly, uh, and leading Zoom meetings. Um, but we've been working hand in hand with the city on this and the play feature recommendations that you see reflect our careful consideration of all the feedback that we received from the 120 surveys, the couple of Zoom community meetings, our experiences in the park, and also our discussions over that year of um, the design process with Tucker. Um, because we're in these uncertain economic times and we have a limited budget, we would really like to maximize the functionality um, that we are getting in this first phase of work and really um, leverage city investment with neighborhood uh, volunteerism. And I'm hoping that we can actually squeeze more than the phase one uh, listed items on the staff report, that we can actually squeeze in some of those phase two items because I think we are gonna need seating. Um, I would love to be able to um, get a drinking fountain in there. Um, performance area. And I think we can do it if we are really very strategic with what we invest in and we have contractors do the heavy lift for things that uh, require big equipment and that expertise. Um, but we have over 30 neighbors who are interested in helping with um, installing ice cream beds, Thank you. Great. Thank you, Emily Griswold. That timer is like scaring me every time it goes off, even though I'm expecting it. Me too. Um, okay. <laughs> yes. I'm ready to invest um, in a more sedate bill. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Um, okay, next uh, person in line for public comment um, is Craig B. Craig B, uh, you're up. We're not hearing you if you are speaking, Craig. I, um, Michael, I don't know if we unmute uh, Craig or if he unmutes himself at this point. If you could advise us, that'd be helpful. I've asked him to unmute. I cannot unmute him, unmute for him. He has to do that. Got it. Okay. so. Um, Craig, if you are, I think you were calling in on your um, phone. If you oh, there could, we go. Okay. There you go. yeah, we hear you. Can you hear me now? My oh, gosh, I was yes. pushing a button. Okay, there it is. Now I'm using up <laughs> all you, your Tomiko. stuff. My timer again. Thank God you, bless Tomiko. you. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. Uh, so thank you for uh, making time for us. Um, I, I think it's really nice that I went after Emily because uh, I adopted actually the path as part of the adopt uh, park program in 2008 and I've seen the volunteerism not only in the planning of this wonderful project but over the years where I've been planting things and another speaker Robin uh, has helped me plant some um, bush grass uh, bunch grass along there and there's other neighbors that have participated in keeping up the path and um, Aaron mentioned, you know, taking her kids through there, and it's just a joyful experience to be out there in the midst of, uh, you know, a public space and working for kind of the betterment of all of our, you know, shared space. And uh, I see a lot of that in our future at meetings when we're talking about this beautiful space that we're trying to renovate. Um, it's a great way to visit with neighbors. Um, it increases the access to the community gardens. So the new path, as Aaron mentioned, it's very difficult to get a bike through that, that very straight across kind of blocked uh, curb area. But once we have a more flowing path into there, it's really gonna increase uh, access to the path and the community gardens. I think we're really gonna improve um, the use both for pedestrians and bike bicyclists alike. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, and I think it's a good model for how to um, bring community members uh, out of their 
out of their spaces and uh, increase community resilience. That's something that we're hearing more about. How do we create more resilience in our communities and micro communities, right, in our own neighborhoods? So it's been really fun to be a part of this planning process. And uh, I'm really looking forward to continuing to work on this process for the decades to come. I think uh, phase one, phase two, there's probably gonna be many phases as this path and uh, park uh, kind of continues to evolve with the neighborhood. That's all, thank you. Great, thank you so much, Craig. Okay, let's see. Robin, you have your hand raised. Uh, why don't we have Robin go next? Thank okay. you. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, hi, well, good yes, evening. Yes, we can. Good evening, Rec and Perk Commission. I am Robin Kozloff. I am a Davis Manor resident. I can see this little park from my front yard. It is the only green space and actually only public space in our entire neighborhood. Um, I'm also a member of the previously mentioned um, creative action team and part of this current park planning group. Um, and my job here tonight is to let you know about the community engagement activities that we've undertaken to encourage participation in this park renovation process. During the um, first phase, or what I call the first phase of our pro project was to work with Tucker envisioning um, what we would like to see in the park and working on these de design scenarios. And in the process, we had these several design workshops and meetings. And for each one of those meetings, we hand flyered all the residents. We hand painted lawn signs that we placed throughout the neighborhood. Um, we sent out electronic communications via our neighborhood email listserv next door and through um, Facebook. For this phase, while we're working with the parks department to finalize some of the designs and decide on our features, um, Parks has sponsored, as they mentioned, the, um, a survey and two Zoom meetings and mailed postcards. We wanted to really amplify and augment that effort. And we went ahead and we also hand flyered every, every um, resident in the neighborhood, um, sent out numerous email reminders and updates, um, as well as updating our Facebook communication and next door. So, Oh, and not to forget that we also wanted to make sure that our Spanish speaking neighbors were included. So Parks did a great job translating the survey. We translated our flyer into Spanish and two of our planning members did go through the neighborhood and hand can or person to person canvassed to get the responses to the survey from our Spanish speaking neighbors. Um, and I think that is, all I wanted to say, except that we are really excited about all this um, visioning and input finally coming to fruition in a park that is very dear to us and is really the center of our neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you, Robin. Okay. I now see that Jessica has her hand raised. And so Jessica, if you wanna go next. And Jessica, I really appreciate your pronouns that you listed on your login. <laughs> thank you so much. And thank you all for um, ah, the opportunity to connect with you. Um, Jessica Maria Ross, I am at the corner of M and Colgate. I am two blocks from our mini park. Um, one of the co-founders of the Davis Manor Neighborhood Council 22 years ago, a uh, member of the creative action team and the park planning group. And just to highlight a couple of things that you've heard so far, that park planning group um, has met every Sunday, every Sunday from September 13th through last Sunday, six weeks, 90 minutes, about 12 of us at the most, about six of us. Um, and as you heard, we, um, another thing I'll underline is we really partnered um, with the city on engaging residents. When Robin talks about hand flyering, she's talking about going to 400 doors. 
with a flyer, a bilingual flyer, among other things. Um, and that's been really fantastic. Um, I sent you all a packet yesterday. It's probably a little late for you to review it all, but I would just want to highlight that we are deeply committed to partnering with the city um, on this and that um, when Craig is talking about resilience and sweat equity, we're really ready to do that. We've already assessed um, what we can do to um, get some of the phase two pieces into phase one. Um, and we also have really thought through how we can work with the city to, um, to really bring forward the recommendations that we are bringing, that we have. So when you look at the packet, you'll see our recommendations, which might be slightly different than the city staff report. You'll also see all of the engagement that might not also be in the staff report. So I just wanted to provide that to you as well. Um, two more things I'll just note is that, um, and this is to underline something that Emily said, we really don't know what the future looks like. Um, this was a, um, we really want to make sure that we can do as much as we can with the funding that we have. So I really want to invite us to all think about how we can work together to get some of those phase two pieces in phase one, the seating, the stream bed, the dry creek, and the performance phase. And um, we think we can really do that with some creative, I know uh, Dan is the king of creative financing, so I'm glad he's on this committee. Um, and I think I'll just close by saying it's been a really rigorous community process. Thank you. Great, thank you so much, Jessica. Okay, Jen Nakanoff, you are next. Welcome, you have three minutes. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, my name's Jen Nakmanoff. I've been a resident and homeowner in the Davis Manor neighborhood for nearly a quarter century and I've raised two kids here. My daughter's a recent Da Vinci High School grad and my son is an eighth grader who will most likely attend Da Vinci High School in a couple years. Um, and when my kids were little, we were frequent visitors to the N Street Park and though we appreciated having a park within easy walking distance and often enjoyed having the space to ourselves, the park did feel a bit neglected. Um, tucked out of sight at one end of the park, the playground also felt a bit unwelcoming and sometimes unsafe. So that's just to say that I'm really, really happy now that the city is not, not only investing resources in our neighborhood park, but working collaboratively with the neighborhood to align these improvements with community priorities. Um, so thanks so much to um, city staff and to you commissioners um, for assisting us with that. Um, I wanna speak a little bit about the collaboration between our neighborhood and Da Vinci High School. And as I mentioned, I have a personal connection to Da Vinci through my kids. Um, as I see it, the school is an integral part of our neighborhood and the people who work and go to school there are our neighbors. The staff and students at Da Vinci walk, bike and drive through our neighborhood, park here and patronize businesses here and groups of students hang out at N Street Park over lunch and after school. Over the past couple of years, our neighborhood organization has been working on building a collaborative relationship with the high school. We've included school administration and student leaders in a variety of community events. And likewise, the school administration has reached out to the neighborhood for input on planned campus improvements. Um, landscape design student Tucker, who you heard from earlier, met with Da Vinci students at the beginning of his work on the N Street project. And we also recently presented Tucker's design to the Da Vinci classes and went over the whole process with them. Um, and the students in the classes really showed a lot of interest in the project. They helped us get out the word about the city park survey. And I think about 40 students responded to that survey. So this input is reflected in the neighborhood park design proposal and recommendations as well. Um, I think that the proposed park improvements offer a variety of formal features and informal landscaped areas for uh, teenagers, high schoolers from Da Vinci and, and others to hang out, talk and eat. And I think the recommended climbing structure and swings will also appeal to teenagers like my kids. 
and that the new playground visibility will both keep teens safe and honest in their use of the park. Um, the N Street Park project offer also offers a lot of fertile ground for neighborhood school collaboration. So we're really looking forward to that and continuing our work with the high school students. And thank you. Why don't you take uh, the last 10 or 15 seconds to wrap up your thoughts, Jen? Oh, really? Okay, well, thanks. Yeah, well, I just think, um, you know, opportunities for collaboration include landscaping, maintenance, uh, public art projects. These are some of the things that we've talked to the students about. Um, and one of my hopes is that as the students participate in these projects and use the park with greater frequency, they'll also take more ownership and responsibility um, caring for the park because it's their park too. Thanks. Great, thank you so much. <clears throat> Okay, so looking at the attendee list, I'm not seeing any other hands raised, but why don't we give it another uh, five or 10 seconds to see if anybody else would like to comment during this public comment time period. Great, Thomas, I see that you have your hand raised. Um, if you could unmute Thomas and give him a chance to yep. talk. Hi, right. go right ahead. Hi, thanks. My name is Tom Sterling. Um, I'm also a resident to the Davis Manor neighborhood, um, living on the corner of M and Colgate. Uh, and I've been here 20 some odd years. And um, a couple of things that I wanted to, to amplify, my, my uh, neighbors had said, um, this process is for me really started some years ago with a, a neighborhood visioning session in which people really uh, came out to offer their um, wish list for things that we might include in our neighborhood park as it is the only green space that we have. Um, the other thing that, that makes to me uh, the Davis Manor so special is the diversity here. We're one of the more diverse neighborhoods in Davis and have a high percentage of Spanish only speaking folks. Um, and uh, have done, having done some of the outreach to them, um, what I learned was that they really value the park highly, that they, you know, um, the, some of the residents were saying that they would come every day with their kids to, to play there. And so it strikes me that one of the things that we're really tr uh, trying to accomplish with this is an is a aesthetically beautiful and um, user-friendly um, multi-purpose play space. Um, and I really do believe that, that it, as we have engaged um, the neighbors, as we've included, uh, as Tucker has really helped us out to vision that, we, we've come up with a design that um, meets all of those criteria. My own plug is that, um, you know, I see this as part of the um, equity and inclusion for the entire city. We're looking at how to, um, uh, you know, develop some green space for ourselves, um, where other neighborhoods have large extens uh, extensive uh, green belts. It would be nice to have a little bit more of that in this neighborhood. And I myself picture uh, expanding that at some point, but that's, that's another conversation. Um, at any rate, it's been a pleasure to uh, join in and I'm really pleased that the city is considering um, supporting this project and I look forward to hearing more um, from everyone involved. Great, thank you so much for that public comment. Okay, in looking at the list of attendees, um, we'll just wait another 10 seconds to see if there's anybody else who would like to make public comment, please using the Zoom app, um, raise your hand. Okay, uh, seeing no other hands raised, why don't we go ahead and close public comment. Thank you so much to everyone uh, for their participation in the public comment time period. Um, so now we will open up the floor for um, commissioners to give comments on this project. Is there anybody who would like to begin? OK, 
Commissioner Harrington, why don't we start with you? Well, you know I have something to say, but I do see Commissioner Hubbard's hand up. Um, oh, um, Tyson, I'm so sorry, first? Commissioner Hubbard. <laughs> so sorry, I wasn't looking at the part where I could see the hands raised. I wasn't ignoring I don't, you. I don't have a lot to say. You know, I think that um, this project sort of speaks for itself. And, you know, I think this is a model project as far as community outreach and uh, making sure that community interests are taken into account. And I really um, commend the neighborhood and Emily and all of the team uh, that has put so much hard work and effort into it. And I'm really excited to see the city prioritizing this and getting some funding lined up to really move this big project forward. And so um, I just give my congratulations and my hopes that everything keeps moving forward quickly and efficiently. Great. Thank you, Commissioner Hubbard. Let me check the hand section to see if other commissioners have their hand raised. If not, I will pitch it over to Commissioner Harrington. Hi, thank for you. Her um, this is Sherry. I want to echo what Tyson said. I'm really impressed with this project, and I was um, more than a year ago when we first heard about it. I think the neighbors coming together to have such um, input on a space where they live is very exciting, and to have a facilitator and a designer like Tucker is just a great match with those neighbors. I think this is an example of a way to get strong community input and a way to make our spaces around Davis um, great communal realms. So this is just really impressive. Um, I, I do have um, a, I, a question and this might be a little bit more of a technical question, um, but will the neighbor's main priorities be incorporated into the final design or are they already? Um, is there anything that the neighbors want and that isn't included in the city's design? I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, I think they really kind of flushed out um, over the course of their planning and getting to here's what else we could do and getting the feedback for them, knowing that it is a, a small footprint. Um, if we could, you know, push down the public works and just kind of expands, you know, south, I'm sure they would be excited about that, but unlikely. Um, so I think my understanding is that there is a, there's a lot of support for what has come out. Um, um, maybe doesn't meet everyone's needs, 100% of people who might use it, but I believe it sounds like there's um, a general consensus that this is something that they're going to be proud of. It kind of hits young, old. It's a place of you know refuge. Um, it can have an area where people can come and gather and have spoken word or have a music thing going on. Um, take the path that looks like it's already been adopted and loved um, on the Fifth Street to kind of keep mobile um, and utilize. Um, the space as best we can. Um, I think they're getting a lot of things in a small space. Um, I love the connection back to Da Vinci. I hadn't even thought about that, about how close in proximity they are. Um, I, I believe, and if somebody else doesn't think so, I'd love to hear from them. Um, but I, I think um, based on the effort the community has put into in this neighborhood, I think they have had the chance to have their voice heard and hopefully they feel like it was heard, whether or not, you know, maybe what uh, one item they wanted made it all the way through, I don't know, but I believe it's a, a good consensus of people who are, are, who are very excited about what is gonna end up being here. There were two things I heard in particular that came up um, once or twice. And one was the um, brought up by um, Commissioner Ono, the, the bench um, maybe near um, uh, along the the concrete, um, and then the other the other um, maybe slight improvement I might have heard was um, making the pathway a little bit wider for bikes and pedestrians, and maybe that's already in the plan. Um, but those were two things I heard. I just wanted to make sure that um, they were captured if 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 the city didn't know about those already. Yeah, that was uh, sorting out all the things um, that were important. That was one of the top ones was the path widening. Okay, got it. Thank you. And um, thank you very much um, and, and to the whole city team for prioritizing this and making this happen. Such a great example. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you, Commissioner Harrington. Let's see. Commissioner Ono, thank you for raising your hand. Why don't you go next? Uh, I just wanted to say that uh, I enjoyed the uh, the engagement of the community behind this playground project. I think that speaks a lot to how well thought out the design and support is. Uh, I think other than the other technical comment I made previously, uh, I think this uh, will be a great addition or renovation to a uh, neighborhood, many parts. That's it. Thank you. Let's see, Commissioner Vink, we haven't heard from you. Um, any comments? I see you shaking your head now. Okay. Um, City Council Member Carson, any comments? I forget if I'm supposed to ask you if you have comments or not. Um, I'm just happy to say uh, that the city is able to assist on this. Uh, we appreciate the significant challenge this neighborhood has taken on with assisting us with the, the siding of the respite center not too far from here. Um, you deserve the help we can give you. And I do hope that the process that's been outlined here tonight of looking for ways to find volunteer labor to help hold down these costs in order to facilitate additional improvements in a first phase or 1.5. I, I do hope those talks continue and something good comes of that. Great, thank you. Um, so I will just close out uh, the commission's comments and say thank you so much for everyone who participated in the public comment. As uh, someone who lives close to, no, go away. Okay, hug. Okay. Um, as someone who lives close to uh, a park, um, we live close to Royal Park, that it is um, difficult to get all of the engagement of neighbors and it's quite impressive that that you have and so i just applaud you for that and um remind ourselves and city staff that the model that your group demonstrated in obtaining that engagement with neighbors is awesome and i'm a little jealous because this sounds like a really good neighborhood to live in and a great group to work with um, so Chris, my understanding is that because this uh, is an informational item that there are no motions that we need to make um, or any type of recommendations. It was just an opportunity for our commission to give feedback. Um, is that correct? Yes, that is correct. No actions required tonight. Okay, great. Well, thank you all who called in for public comment and Big shout out to Tucker for all your work and Emily as well. Thank you all for attending. Okay, um, moving on to the next item. Chris, I did realize I skipped over the consent calendar. Uh, approval, is that something that I should go back and do? We can go back after this next item. Okay. So why don't we move on to the Brentwood Playground renovation project. And I will hand it over to city staff for the intro. Yes, yeah, so um, Anne is also going to introduce this one. We also have um, Greg Melton and Daniel Lauder from the Melton Design Group who have been working on this project with the city for the Rose Creek uh, Brentwood mini park area um, for the playground reservation. So with that, I will turn it over to Ann. Hello again. Um, again, Brentwood mini, didn't know this park existed. Um, I think I actually ran past it like a decade ago in a running group maybe, because you, as you're running the paths, all of a sudden you stumble across another park here in Davis. They're like, they're literally just like confetti in the town. Um, but soup, a, a nice little area. It's got shade. It has this unfortunately old playground structure that was put in um, in 1989. It was renovated in 1999, but it's about 20 years old. And so that in the industry world, um, it's time 
um, for this to move on and get a new one. Um, so part of this neighborhood um, is the Hyatt House Hotel that um, in 2017 was, I believe, approved and construction began last year. It's on Cowell Boulevard. Um, and there was an anticipation of you know, mitigation being needed. So some of the funding coming um, from the developers to help uh, fund this uh, renovation of this park um, to the redevelopment of it. And then they will be, um, sorry, I'm, I'm skipping ahead here on my image here. Um, construction tax and park impact uh, fees are also what's helping cover the cost. Um, they started with the, with the um, designer, I guess, over a year ago with some initial surveys of what was interested with the community. And from that became two concepts um, this is, I believe, what we're looking at, the final concept. Um, same kind of process. We did postcards out to the neighborhood. Um, there was also some neighborhood reps that have been a part of the process as well, um, at least over a year or so, that we've also met with. Um, Dale has met with uh, many more times than I have. We have kind of followed back up with them after Zoom meetings as well. Um, those um, um, 181 postcards went out and we had 49, which I still think is tremendous having somebody actually have to look at something, click or type it in, go through it to have people respond that way. Um, I think it says a lot about those in Davis in the parks and how much they value them and what they bring. Again, there's multiple streets that are kind of crossing into this park. Um, when I've been out there several times to put out the park signs that had um, the QR code as well as the bit.ly link, um, people coming by, running by, kids playing, a kid and a, a mom playing soccer, a walkers, um, just lots of kind of people coming in, um, enjoying it. It has multiple paths that are, um, that kind of converse on this area. It's also has paths that kind of go past that lead on to another park. So um, some of that will come out when we talk about the presentation of the design, uh, why some things are here and some things aren't because there are other neighborhood parks that already have some amenities and we don't want to duplicate everything at each park, um, to kind of spread things out because we don't want this to become like a a regional park or community park. This is a neighborhood park, so it needs to be mindful of its use as well. Um, we also did next door, next door posts. So we did very similar outreach as well. Um, it sounds like we have a kind of a little bit of a, a groove going with what we've done. We've done the postcards. We had next door posts, um, signs at the park as well. We had two Zoom outreach meetings. Um, one of the families that attended was adorable. They had a little son. His name was Dominic. He was about a year old and he actually turned the camera off um, as his parents were trying to. So all of a sudden it was like dark and they're like, wait, what? And you can just kind of hear them in the background as they're trying to figure out how to get it back on. Um, but we met some of the other residents as well. Um, um, and they were interested in hearing more about it um, and seeing imagery um, and what possibly could be out of this park. So um, they got um, a good turnout of responses. We also engaged with the police department to have a crime um, a crime prevention through environmental design um, review done where they come out, take a look and see like what are possible issues here. Um, because it's a very mature area, some of the shrubs have become overgrown trees, um, providing a lot of darkness to some degree. Um, while it might be nice to come kind of through this little shaded fairy tale land during the day, at night it's going to be pretty dark because it's blocking out some of the light. So uh, there was recommendations to clear up some of the sight lines, um, kind of raise the canopy, so to say, um, as well as um, where we position things in the park. So um, the designers, again, will talk a little bit more about it, but in the initial two concepts, the structure, the picnic shelter that you see there um, actually had a more, um, this location and also had a position a little bit more central. Um, and the concern was they wanted it lots of interest of having it closer to the path because it could be seen easier. Uh, the play structure that was ultimately decided as well, um, the feedback um, was people asked about having it be a little bit more transparent. Um, and you'll see what the, the final image was, but in a lot of it's flexible and they can modify the dif different panels on it, but they didn't want it to become a hidey hole, so to say, where somebody can kind of like hide and you wouldn't know they're there. Um, so they want to make it fun for kids to want to come to, but we don't want to make it um, a place where people can make poor choices either because it's, you know, um, secluded. Um, and I, I, I don't want to talk anymore because I think the the designers are going to talk a lot better about you know what what they have here, what's the benefits of some of the the, the things that you'll see here. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Greg and Daniel, and hopefully they are here. I believe I saw them. Yep, we're here. There we go. Gotcha. All right, so we'll let the the experts talk. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, glad to be with you guys tonight, and I think uh, Anne hit it on the head uh, working with her and Dale and all the community. Uh, groups that have played a role as listening to the N Street Park and um, 
God, the, the community involvement is great in all your parks. I, I love being involved with it. Um, makes our job uh, really clear to be able to direct it towards what the, what the people really want. So you're doing a great job with that. Um, yeah, with this park design, I think the, <clears throat> the key input we got was uh, we wanted it to be both active and passive, both natural, uh, engaging, and you know, some free play, not all dictated. And so we, um, if, if you're at this park, uh, I guess, Anne, do you have cursor capabilities there? No, Tamiko does. Oh, Tamiko. Well, the original play area, if you can just kind of circle that area, <clears throat> which is up in the top, we really had one, that, yeah, we had one play structure on the site and then just a little bit of uh, extra bark. So we've actually almost, tripled the amount of play area on this site. Um, the, the shade structure, picnic area, uh, seating also has, has, ex, has grown. Um, and we really wanted to maintain the amount of turf. The neighbors really wanted to keep their turf. So the areas on the right side where you see some of the large play structures and stuff, that area wasn't turf, it was a, a drainage zone. So it was very unused. Uh, you know, if you were a kid that wanted to dig in the dirt, that was where you played. So um, that's not a bad thing. It's just, uh, it, we were able to then use a lot of this park to expand the amount of play uh, to what the, the people really wanted. So <clears throat> to just kind of go over the play structures real quick, um, swings are always awesome. Uh, on, on the top of the screen, we, we have, we put a swing in, in the narrow part of the playground. And this swing uh, in the bottom right-hand corner of your you're drawing the tree trunk swing has a friendship swing on it along with your standard strap swing. So uh, we really, I think a lot of people have experienced this swing. It's been out for almost 10 years now, but it's a real fun swing for moms and moms and kids, dads and kids. And uh, the, the little toddlers get to, to really uh, feel safe in the swing. And, and then they can graduate up to the older swing when they get a little bit bigger and, um, like we mentioned, we're trying to use as many natural looking products. We were trying to stick away, stay away from the bright reds, yellows and greens and just kind of blend this park in. Um, so we had a swing and then uh, some of us are of age where we remember the old, uh, the old merry-go-rounds that we used to play in. Uh, they did not have governors on them at that time. So we were able to go as fast as we possibly could. So um, the next uh, cable spinner is kind of a, uh, climber slash merry-go-round version where you're able to climb up on it, sit on it, go up or down, feel comfortable inside the little cubby and spin around as fast as your friends want to spin you. So um, I think that one got a lot of publicity in our survey. Uh, it, it was, uh, we had several different spinners, smaller, larger, and we kind of ended up with a medium sized one. And, uh, and so again, that's just fun and you can do whatever you want on that. Um, further down, we have the cable climber, and uh, that's on the right side of your drawing. And we really wanted to create something that kids could climb on any way they wanted to. Up, down, hang, hang upside down. You know, I remember hanging upside down on a lot of different structures as a kid. And, and this one is, you know, it doesn't direct the play. It allows you to direct the play. And I think, uh, you know, some kids will want to climb to the top bar, and some kids will want to sit on the bottom bar. And that's totally perfect. Um, we wanted to create some open free play. So kind of like your end street project uh, on, the, on the left side of the playground there next to the turf under the big tree, we have everything from natural boulders, logs, uh, a wooden tunnel. Um, they're in the blue, I'm sorry, in the, in the play area there. There you go. And so, you know, this is where you can, it's kind of a little obstacle course. You jump from rock to rock. You can, you know, pick up the nearest stick and have a little sword fight on that if you want. Um, climb through the tunnel, jump on or off. Uh, and, and what's great about it is that tree pretty much is going to have that shaded um, in the afternoon. So the whole afternoon, that area is, is definitely shaded. Uh, a lot of the park is shaded, but um, I really like these because it, it just makes it so much fun for the kids to just sit on the rock if they want, talk to their friends or get off and, and jump around. And then our final play structure is our, our large 
Uh, I kind of call it the huck fin play structure. It's very, very natural looking. That's up in the upper right hand corner. Um, we have upgraded this. Uh, it looks like a bunch of closed sheds. So we've opened up the play structure. We have more open panels so you can see through it completely. We put a crookedy bridge on it instead of a stable bridge. So, you know, an eight foot bridge that's kind of, you know, not stable. So you're gonna have to bounce back and forth on it. And then um, what's neat also about this climber is it's got, a, it's got a big rope climber on the right. You see it going up to that second story. And so if you just wanna stay on the lower side, you know, if you're, if you're not feeling the, the challenge or you're, or you're not quite old enough to where you feel, feel comfortable, then you just stay on the lower part of the project or underneath it, we have benches and areas underneath that structure. Um, so we really wanted to capture all the different age groups on this single structure instead of splitting it up. And uh, I think we've done a good job, Daniel and, uh, and Kelly Oates, uh, Game Time helped us with some of that structure. And so we're, uh, um, we're I think everybody was really happy with uh, how that turned out. Um, so that's kind of the playground. Uh, we, uh, in, the, in the conversation with the majority of the neighbors, uh, they understood you know, where their houses backed into it, where the playground was gonna be. And um, with uh, opening up all the shrubbery around the perimeter of this site, the views into it are gonna be, uh, are, are gonna be pretty open. The, the actual shade structure itself was left on that end of the park. We moved it off the path a little bit. This is a new shade structure. Uh, the old one is a, a beautiful old redwood structure, but it's, it's had its time and it's uh, time to replace it. Um, the, the footings and everything were, were definitely getting loose. And, and so we've got now a steel structure uh, that'll go there, but it, it's very visible from Brentwood Place cul-de-sac. So if you're driving through there and just want to check in, or if we happen to have security in the area, then that group picnic area um, and picnic tables will be are very visible from the cul-de-sac of Brentwood Place, along with a lot of the play area. Uh, let's see. I mentioned that we're, we're uh, to open this park itself really was overgrown. Um, the Coming into it, I think Brentwood Place was the most open view, but uh, Albany Avenue, Concord, even Evan Court had a lot of large shrubs. So I think by opening that up, it's gonna feel really safe for people to come in here and play in here. And, um, and so I'm, I'm very happy about that. And then uh, one other little element was our bench swing on the other side. Uh, they're popular in several other parks that you guys have in the area. And so we saw this as a nice passive area to sit across the turf, away from all the action, a little quiet area. If you wanna watch you know, the kids playing, you can. If you're just there reading a book with your, your kid, that's special too. So a real passive sitting area. Um, let's see. I think that kind of you know, wraps up the, the concept and what we have in the park. Um, I'm, I guess, uh, Anne, if we want to talk about any of the other public engagements we've had, um, we can go into that or we can talk about the design some more. Oh, I'm sorry, I was trying to find my button here. Um, I think we've covered a lot of it. Um, we don't, I wish I had put in um, a current picture of the park. It has, um, it's really, it's really kind of weird. It is like, a, I mean, Sherry's probably seen this. It like, from the, I guess the north end to the south, um, it kind of like dives. Uh, it's It will be brought up to grade because right now it's kind of sunk on one side and we have a sump pump that I believe is not functional. And so that will be remedied. Um, but as you said, it is it is overgrown in many of these areas. When I went out there to post signs, I was trying to find out like, well, where, where exactly will I put the sign? Cause you can you can see it from here, but you can't see it from this area. Um, it's just things that have you know just kind of grown and we've just tried to trim them up, but they really need to be pruned or removed and something else put in their place. Um, so I think that alone is gonna, you know, kind of beautify the area as well. Um, this design is, I think, super, super great. I, I love the play structure. Um, a lot of great feedback from the residents about that. Um, the main concern being, as you see it right now, it looks kind of like it's a, like a fort. Um, it kind of reminds me of the Pirates in the Caribbean ride, the little shed where the guy is rocking. 
um, and playing his banjo. Um, that's the kind of vibe I get, but it actually will be opened up a little bit more. So it will be a little bit more see-through. Um, so if you have somebody up there, you would be able to see them uh, rather than them kind of hiding out and you're not quite aware somebody is there. Um, but there was lots of great elements that were put into here to kind of appeal to many different ages. Um, again, trying to hit the passive and the active engagement because you have you know users of all different kinds. I'd also like to say that bench swing, that sway bench that we're gonna have in there, um, we actually were able to eliminate the cost for it because we actually had ordered one to go over at Cedar Park that's on K Street and taking feedback from those residents actually didn't, didn't want more seating in that area. Um, a lot of concerns about some of the issues they've had in the past and they, they thought that more seating actually would bring people to the park that we're not looking to bring to the park. Um, so we listened to our residents in that area and we pulled that one and we're actually gonna be able to reutilize it in this park. So exciting about um, how things work out. And that's just this year. Uh, we had ordered it in the last year and when we went to go put it in, um, the residents were like, no, don't want it. We're like, bummer, it's awesome. Um, we just redid Village Park and they have, uh, I believe two actually, and they're great. I, I sat out there, I'm, like, I'm gonna start coming to this park. I'm gonna drive over here and I'm gonna have my lunch at this park even though it's nowhere near uh, where I work, um, but it's it's great. It's just like a, a, you know, bring out your sweet tea and you're just rocking there and having a good time with a book. Um, I think a lot of these amenities are gonna bring people to engage in it, um, even if they don't have kids um, because it's just gonna be a, a restful kind of location. Um, with lots of things. And again, it's not the, you know, bright colors that kids actually do like, um, but trying to keep in mind that you have other residents in this area besides kids. I think this, uh, this neutral um, palette is still gonna be very appealing, especially when you have all these kind of new functions um, and equipment that are gonna have pretty exciting play value. Great. Thank you so much, Greg, and thank you, Anne. Um, Kelly, was there anything you wanted to add, or should we jump into commissioner comments? Or I commissioner am good. I think, yeah, Greg, Greg did a great job describing all the elements, and um, I'm really impressed with this design. I'm, I'm excited to see it come to fruition. Um, I'm just here if anyone has questions about, um, you know, any of the items you see here. Great. Thanks, Kelly. Okay, commissioners, it's time for technical questions. If you have a technical question, please raise your hand via Zoom, or you could just unmute yourself and start talking. Uh, okay, Commissioner Ono. Yes, uh, Go right first of all, I think this is a great design. Uh, I did drive out to the park and, and agree that it's, well worth the time now to revisit this park. There's, it need, does need the renovation. One question I had is I noticed a lot of the sod on the existing park ground is dying. And I noticed in the priorities, there was going to be installing new sod, uh, but there was a concern about sod with too much shade. So I was kind of curious as to, are you using a different kind of sod or is the sod area different so that uh, sh the shade from the trees isn't going to be a recurring issue? I know we all like shade for the park areas, but it just wasn't clear as to how that's being addressed so we don't have the same sod problem for, with the shade. Yeah, Robert, great, great point. So a couple things is, uh, the shade is really dense along the edge of the playground where there's these trees. So um, we have a lot of trees on the site, but uh, our goal was to plant uh, uh, more of a shade loving uh, seed back into this. And we did put some decomposed granite um, underneath some of the shade trees that were you know, right under the tree where it's really dense shade. So we are handling uh, a lot of that. Um, by just eliminating the turf that isn't really super functional. Um, the, the neighborhood definitely wanted to keep the turf because, you know, like Ann said, she's seen people play in there and, and they, they like it. So I think we've, uh, by switching to a little more shade tolerant uh, seed package and then taking out some of the super dense shade areas just completely out of turf where it isn't, I'm, I, I can't even get the other turf to grow there. So I think we've made a couple of those adjustments. 
Thank you. I, I would also add, I believe there was an irrigation line that was going to be addressed as well. Does yeah. that ring a bell, Greg? Um, Cause there is some spot, which I think is just not getting any to start with. And so that's not, obviously not helping. So by reducing the, the grass area that's just not being successful because it's being shaded out um, and then helping the area that is, you know, not getting, is not overshaded, it's just not getting irrigation will help remedy that. Um, lots of the comments in the surveys were, they need to, the TLC for the grass, keep the grass, but it needs help. It's dead, it's sad. Right. I was like, oh gosh, the poor grass, they love it, but it needs, it needs a little update. No, so it'll get aerated and the irrigation will be adjusted to match the new edges. And, and so I think it'll be a much more uh, lower maintenance, more successful turf uh, little meadow there. Great, thank you, Commissioner Rona. Any other questions that you had? Okay, seeing none. Um, other commissioners, if you have a question, please raise your hand or just Feel free to unmute yourself. Dr. Silva, I have a couple of questions. Um, Go for it. I, I noticed on the survey results, page one of nine, um, we asked the residents if they pre pre um, prefer concept option one or two. And it was like a 50-50 split, basically. What is the difference between the concept option one and two? Uh, and can, or can someone throw the it, design back up? I would say the, the main difference between one and two was the location of the, of the picnic shelter. Um, in concept, I believe one, it is more towards the pathway on the north side. And in concept two, it, which you can't see because I don't think we included in there, it's more central. It's under kind of that main tree in the middle. Um, then it was like, it was like, a, it was like 29 to 20, 30, you know, yeah. it was really evenly split. So we, um, I would tell you PD's recommendation was concept one so that the picnic shelter would be more visible from the path. Um, I think there was a lot of co comment from residents as well as like, well, if we're rolling in on a wagon for a party for, you know, birthday party, being right along the path where they have to drag the wagon up into the park was a, a plus. Um, PD recommended that. And so we went back to the neighborhood reps, which I don't see any of them on attending because um, they could also, <coughs> excuse me, weigh in. Um, they put back and they conferred as well. And they um, agreed. They like, I think we should go with one very close. If it was a landslide, I think we would have been stuck true to, you know, what the results showed, but one of the neighborhood reps like, well, I voted for the other one, but I can easily see why number one. So he kind of unofficially changed his vote. So that's the direction we went with it. Yeah. Well, but the main, I, yeah, the main difference would be the positioning of the shelter and then how that affects the layouts of what you can have for the, the features of the park equipment. It sounds good. I, I really love the design and I should have started with that. I mean, I, I want to go play on it when it's built. It's super cool. Um, do we know how many respondents or about how many young kiddos live in this neighborhood? On the other survey for um, in Street Park, it was close to 75% of respondents had um, kids, um, school age kids. Do we know what that is for this, this area? You no, know, we did not ask that question. Um, I can tell, I can, um, far as I know, we didn't ask that question. I can tell you the um, neighborhood reps from the ones I met, several of them have kids as well. Um, and the ones that attended um, the, the meetings um, had kids as well. Dominic was one. Um, he's very cute, by the way. Um, so I, I would say it's, you know, it's a mature neighborhood as well. I mean, it's not a brand new neighborhood as well, but there was a lot of interest as well from that, that group of neighborhoods. So they have a little neighborhood reps and they are the ones who've kind of helped um, move this project along as well. Maybe not in the same version, as far as I can tell, as maybe N Street, um, but they're very interested. But unfortunately, we did not ask that information. There, well, there was a lot, there was a lot of input though, that we realized we had a a, a wide spectrum of youth from youngsters up to the 12, 14, 15 year olds. So, you know, they're saying, well, my kid's only going to be here for another couple of years on this playground, but well, but mine is only four years old. He's got a whole, whole yeah. lifetime on this playground. So that's why we do have kind of all, all ages interacted in here. And, 
I think they're going to blend well. Well, it, I think this would be good for any um, kiddo, even a, um, even those young of heart. Um, I do wonder what kind of features we might have for adults in this park. Um, I think for kids, this is a really great space. And if there's any room to make this um, um, park friendly for adults to play and have fun, um, maybe consider that too. I did read a comment or two about wanting a, maybe a bocce um, area or something for adults. So it's just something to consider. Um, and um, is there anything um, along that play, um, along the side where there is play structure, is there anything there that makes noise? That the you swings would think? probably be the loudest element. Think, and Kelly, Kelly might be able to answer that a little bit better. Yeah, there, there's nothing that um, makes noise uh, other than, you know, just the kids playing. Okay, yeah. There's, I think you, are you asking about a, you know, maybe a zip? Yeah. Blind giving noise? Man. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. But that's, I mean, that's a great question. That's something that- Zip lines are, zip lines are great and should have been considered for this park. I mean, that I think the bocce ball would be great as well. It's <laughs> the footprint is, you know, we put the bocce ball in, then you have no grass. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Well, just trying to um, think ahead of things that have come up in the past. Um, and is, was there anything that was pretty major left out of this design that the residents wanted? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think, think so. so. I mean, the I bocce ball course up, didn't make it. Yeah, that didn't make the list, but we did end up, uh, you know, with the, the wood climber and the cable spinner were like two things that, you know, we were going, okay, should we do one or the other? But then they were providing both a different really type of play. So we put them both in. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for answering my questions and for doing this work. What, what a huge improvement this will be. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Harrington. Let's see, Commissioner Hubbard or Griswold um, or Bank, any questions? Okay. Dan, any questions from you? No, I just sound a note of context here for folks. Uh, this is kind of a model project in the sense that this was one of the solutions to a neighborhood dispute with the construction of the Hyatt House Hotel. Part of the monies are a contribution from them. And what I particularly liked about the agreement, some of it had to do with the redesign of the hotel to pr protect the privacy of adjacent neighbors. Um, but what I also really liked about it was the, that it provided a benefit to the, the neighborhood that really needed, but it was also something that anybody in the city will benefit from who wishes to go there, um, including apparently your park staff. So that's really great. Um, but I mean, I like those sorts of compromises where everyone benefits. Thank you for that context. I think that's incredibly helpful to understand the bigger picture associated with this, with this park. Thank you. Okay, going once or twice for commission members for technical questions. Okay, seeing none, hearing none. Uh, why don't we open it up for public comment? Public comment uh, is now officially open. If you are attending and would like to make a comment, please on the Zoom app, click the little button to raise your hand, or if you are calling in, you can press star nine to indicate that you would like to be unmuted. I'm seeing no hands raised. You can hear my husband clapping in the background because the Rays probably just scored in the World Series game. Uh -oh. Um, uh -oh. Tamiko, any any um, hands that I'm not seeing or any public comments? Otherwise, we'll close it. Nope, you can go ahead and close it. Great. Okay, public comment is closed. Um, any uh, final comments, 
or um, thoughts from commission members on this project. This is Commissioner Griswold. Uh, I just wanted to comment that I attended the Zoom community meeting and yeah, it, it seemed like the park was getting an enthusiastic response. I'm excited to have um, a different style of um, play features in this park than we have in other parks. So I think it'll be a nice compliment to um, other parks in Davis and I'm looking forward to seeing this installed. Thank you, Commissioner Griswold. Other commissioners with comments or thoughts, you can either raise your hand or just unmute yourself. I won't put anybody on the spot, so speak now or forever hold your peace. Is that how the saying goes, speak now? Okay. Um, I um, can just close this out by expressing appreciation for Greg and Kelly and Anne on this project. And Dan, it, it really does help put this into context, the um, negotiations that led to at least partial funding of this project and improvement of this neighborhood park. And, and maybe when COVID's over, I can meet you there for a cup of tea um because it sounds like a great great little spot um so thank you so much let me see back on my agenda if we have to make an official chris i'm gonna hit pause for a second and ask you if this is what if this was an informational item or if we might have a motion associated with this item No, this was an informational item as well. So we Great. were just looking for feedback. Okay. So informational item equals no motion. Greg, thank you so much. Thank uh, you, guys. And Kelly, thank, thank you. Fun. Thank you for attending and thanks My for pleasure. your work on this project. Look forward to seeing you guys soon. And Kelly, again, if they want a zip line, just, just call I, her. I know who That's to call, us. Darcy. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thank you guys so much. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay, um, so why don't we go back to the consent calendar that I skipped over um, on our agenda. My apologies. Um, if we could then make a motion, if someone could make a motion in regards to accepting the consent calendar and items that are routine and non-controversial, that'd be great. I move that we uh, vote to approve the consent calendar. Thank you, Commissioner Harrington. And I'll second that. Thank you, Commissioner Griswold. Okay, um, Commissioner Hubbard, how do you vote on that motion? Yes. <laughs> Commissioner Ono. Yes. Commissioner Vink. Yes. Commissioner Silbaugh votes yes. Commissioner Harrington and Griswold made the motion and seconded, so the motion passes. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, we will move to one of the last items, um, the commission subcommittee and staff communication report. So Dan, I know you previously gave uh, some updates from the city council's perspective. Are there any other comments that you have as our city council liaison? Nothing more to add, other than to congratulate you on the wonderful job you've done here in your first voyage uh, running a Zoom meeting uh, uh, in official capacity. You've done a wonderful job tonight. Thanks. I appreciate it. Aside from my son's photo bomb or video chat bomb, um, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, okay, uh, Commission Subcommittee for Aquatic Economic and Financial Analysis. Any updates from Commissioners Harrington, Hubbard, or Vink? I'm seeing some head shaking now. Any updates at this time, Darcy? I don't think. 
no updates for any of the subcommittees? Yeah. Sounds good. Why don't we hop to item number eight, future oh. agenda items. Sorry, Darcy, I was just talking about the aquatics subcommittee. I don't know oh. if the park maintenance standard one has any. Okay, my apologies. Um, art in public spaces, Commissioner Griswold or Harrington, any updates on that subcommittee? No updates. Oh, actually, sorry. <laughs> I, I, this is more just like a little report that um, I don't know if you all have heard, but there was a grant that I believe the city council granted to um, International House for, um, for public art that would go in Central Park. Um, so there's the solidarity space that is um, by the oak tree. And so part of that grant would actually pay for some more permanent uh, feature there. Because as we're heading in into the winter time, you can imagine that the, those paper um, fixtures are not gonna survive very well. So um, anyway, I just wanted to um, let folks know about that. Awesome, that's exciting. And I, and I do think it was mentioned in our September meeting, but another kind of thanks and appreciation for the um, city staff and the respect for that has been given to that solidarity, solidarity space and the art um, pieces that have been placed in that area. It's a great spot. Okay, thank you for that update on the subcommittee or updates in um, art and public spaces. Um, subcommittee for Parks and Maintenance Standards. Commissioners on Oregon, any updates to report out to the group? No update at this time. Okay, thanks. How about with volunteer engagement? Um, either myself, uh, Commissioner Griswold, or um, Commissioner Hurt, who's not here. I don't believe we have any updates to report. Um, um, actually, oh, go ahead, Emily. Oh, well, I think you've heard the update on what I'm doing with a neighborhood volunteering <laughs> for N Street Park. Um, I did and that really is a great, great example and model for, um, we gotta like document that and memorialize it for future volunteer engagements. So it's a great kind of case study for that. Sorry, go ahead, Chris. Oh, I was just gonna let the commission know um, that the utility volunteer utility tool trailer has arrived and it is now in service. Um, we are in the process of um, getting all the tools and stuff um, installed into the trailer. And so that will be available hopefully for the spring um, when we start doing more community services projects, hopefully. Great. Thank you for that update. Okay, those are all the subcommittees. Um, Chris, do you want to speak to any future agenda items or the long range calendar? Um, before we get to the long range calendar, I did also want to let the commission know that um, we have installed the first round of the Central Park commemorative pavers. Um, we have, thank you. Thank you to the park staff. They did a wonderful job um, installing the pavers um, there by the Heritage Oak Tree. Um, we have some of them, the ones that had been previously purchased by members of the public um, have been installed. And then we are currently continuing to um, allow residents to purchase them. And then, then we'll be installing them in groups small groupings for that. So if you're down at Central Park, I encourage you to go take a walk and take a look at them. They look really nice. It, it turned out very nice so far. Um, and then related to the long range calendar, um, we do have a busy November anticipated. We do have appointments of the subcommittee for the Golden Heart Award scheduled um, you, the commission will be receiving the survey inquiry results from Arroyo Park 
um, playground amenities. We'll probably be having a discussion on Prop 68 revitaliz revitalization project. Um, and then the 2019 IPM annual report and the sports complex REFI um, is anticipated to come to the commission for their review before we go out to that. And then they're also, um, we are anticipating having an item related to the cannery urban farm, um, which um, is being repurposed um, from its original um, content. And there's a proposal that community development staff will be bringing forward to the commission for your thoughts and consideration. Yeah, so. Quick, quick question, Chris. Um, what's the difference between in uh, the November agenda, the Royal Park inquiry results? What's the difference between that item and the March 7th March 17th, Arroyo Park Community Survey results. Are those the same item or is it something different? Uh, I'm sorry, which, what did you, the... So under, for next month's meeting, um, uh, we have Arroyo Park Inquiry results. Uh -huh. And I'm and I'm wondering if then now like one two three four months under that um we're under March seventeenth Arroyo Park Community Survey results if that's a uh, typo and or I'm just wondering well, if they're two separate things. Sorry about that. Those are all items that you've already talked about last March, or were oh gotcha. I forgot to delete those parts. So sorry about that. <laughs> No, no worries. Okay, thanks for clarifying. Yeah. Any other questions from commission members, questions or comments about the long range calendar? Uh, I'll just note that it looks like next month is really packed. And so if there's anything that could um, push out a little further, it seems like that would be a good idea if we want to avoid competing with the city council for meeting length. Um, so maybe, I don't know if like the IPM annual report is something that anything that doesn't have a deadline associated with it seems like it would be good to um, defer. Yes, we're, we've already been in staff discussions about that. Chris, I did want to mention that in the cannery, the homeowners association has sponsored a work group to discuss amongst the residents uh, some ideas for the urban farm area. I wonder if that could somehow be deferred from the November meeting so that that committee can work with the community development folks and have a discussion so that uh, everyone's up to date. Um, I can talk to our staff and, and see, yeah. Okay, thank you. Maybe Commissioner Ono, if you send some contact information over to Chris, maybe she can help. Yes, I can do that. Facilitate that. Thanks. Okay. Um, we are at the end of our agenda. And um, if someone would like to make a motion for adjournment, that would be great. I move to adjourn. Vink. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Banks. We have a motion to adjourn. Does anybody second that? Wow, you want to continue? You guys are <laughs> awesome. Second. I was about to say that Tyson's yawn might be a second to that motion. Um, please don't will... let this die for lack of a second, please. Am I allowed to second? I second your motion, Commissioner Bank. Um, so let's go for a vote. Commissioner Griswold. Aye. Commissioner Harrington? Aye. Commissioner Hubbard? Aye. Commissioner Ono? Aye. And Commissioner Vink made the motion. I seconded, so that motion passes. Thank you, everybody. 
and have a great rest of your evening. And thank you city staff for helping and supporting me through my first go at this. Well, well done, Madam Chair, thank you. Yes, yeah. well done. <laughs> Very thank Thanks everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Wow, what a quick exit from everyone.